Hello guys, welcome to another review. Today we have the Sigma 7200 DG APO Macro. So basically, this lens falls into the category of telephoto zoom lenses, and I'm going to re to give you my opinions and my experiences uh, for this lens. So I bought this lens about a year ago, not about ex actually it's a year ago in March 2014, 2014. So yeah, I've waited this long for a review so that I can give you a more, a better review of this lens. So, yeah, this lens is, um, I think, the most budget friendly zoom lens there is in the market at the moment. Of course, there is the non APO version because this is the APO version. So, yeah, actually, the non APO version could be a little bit cheaper. Although, I do suggest spending a little bit more and going for the APO version instead. So, basically what the APO version is, it has it, it has more glass, uh, specialized glass inside to reduce the chromatic aberration, increase sharpness as well. So, there is a sharpness increase in sharpness between this and the non-APO. It's not much, but there is. And you know, for high details, I do recommend the APO instead of the non APO. Although I do not have the non APO, I have some, I have friends who have it, and of course, it's not bad, but the non APO delivers better picture quality than the non APO. So, about aesthetics of the lens, this lens, you know, some people may love it, some will not. Personally, I don't. I don't mind that much. It is a little bit fat, and there are slimmer, um, slimmer lenses. For example, the Canon 75 to 200, which is much thinner and also much cheaper than this lens. We'll talk about it later on. So yeah, talking about this, it has a smooth zoom ring. It's well damped actually, not too loose, not too tight. So the zoom ring is very built, good build. Now about the focus ring, I do feel that it is a little bit too loose. It may be because uh, you know after a year, of, a year of using it, it may be that effect, but I don't think so. It was loose from the first time I used it. So yeah. So apart from the zoom range and zoom zoom ring, you have two switches on the lens, the macro mode. Now let's zoom a little bit on this switch. Now what macro modes does is that it, it it enables you to get close to the subject. If not mistaken, this does get close to two is to one ratio, which is very good for um, for this type of lens. So you only will be able to use the macro mode in between 200 and 300 millimeter. For now, I can switch it on macro because it's between 200 and 300 although you can't go less if it's on so you have to switch it back to normal to be able to zoom back to 70 which is very good so you know it's a bonus for this lens not many not many dealer photo lenses have the capability of doing this it has the new sigma's matte finish which is not bad yeah you've got distance markings so yeah, instead of the window, you have markings right here, which is not bad at all. Let's zoom a little bit out. So Canon 75 to 200 does not have the markings, which you know you really can. You may use them and may not. I sometimes use them for landscape shooting. You tell me you use 70 to 200. When I when the subject is very far off, I do sometimes use it for this. For example, you're on the other side and you want to take a picture of the for example a cathedral and you're far away for example you can use this for zooming in also you have the autofocus and manual focus switch normal so yeah that's basically it this does has a, this does have a filter thread of 58 millimeters so yeah the filter thread is plastic one thing to note you may not you know you may not mind, but some people may do mind. Although most fil filter threads are made of plastic nowadays. So anyways, here you've got these readings. To be honest with you, I've never used them and I don't know what they're used for. 
so yeah you have the badge here which says Sigma APODG it's you know just an add-on so let's put on the cap so you've got the back uh, landscape rear landscape so this does have a matter mount because it does have some weight to it you know it would worry me if the lens has a plastic mount because it does ha feel a little bit heavy you know it's not light it's not that heavy as well so yeah one thing to note is it has a plastic mount so this is the Canon version there is it's available for multiple cameras I think Nikon Nikon Sony Pentax yeah those now this lens is comes with a lens hood and also this lens pouch wait a second let's take it so it does come with this lens pouch which is a nice touch as well you know Canon lenses don't come with a lens hood or with a lens pouch you know for Canon lenses you have to spend an extra thirty dollars for a lens hood and Sigma provides you a lens hood and a lens pouch so the lens hood is massive and makes the lens more massive as well let's zoom a little bit out so one thing to know is I do use it all the time for protection and yes it, it has some felt to it on the inside which is not bad you know it comes free so it's a bonus <clears throat> so you've got uh, the front elements as I said before it is a uh, 58 millimeters so yeah compared there are other options right at the moment there's the terminal version which to be honest with you I never uh, try to review it because in my opinion I don't like terminal lenses although the new lenses seem to be very good but the telephoto one the cheap one is, doesn't seem that good so I went with the Sigma because you know for the price for the budget I had it was the best option so yeah compared to the non APO as I said before in this review it, it does uh, have a little bit image quality more image quality than the non APO compared to the 75 to 200 the 75 to 200 is a little bit better and sharper from the from 70 to 200 may I think because my friend has it and uses it and we did try to compare it so the 75 to 200 does have better image quality between 75 and 200 sorry but this lens delivers better image quality on 300 than the 75 to 200 by Canon now actually this is more expensive than the Canon model so yeah it's a matter of, it's a personal opinion but you know you may either go for this or the Canon version so yeah you may find the Canon version much cheaper on eBay and even this is not that expensive on eBay but anyway so I opted for the Sigma because you know I thought you know let's try Sigma because this is the first telephoto lens I have <clears throat> Now, what many of you want to hear is if I don't recommend this lens or not. Well, yes or no. Yes, because for beginners, you know, it is the best. Not the best, but it is a good lens to start with. Telephoto range. It does give you new focal range from the kit lens, which is very good. And you will explore new zooms, zoom ranges with this. So, for example, if you, with the kit lens you used to go to 55mm, you can now go to 300 it's like going from you know there's about 250 millimeters um, difference which is a great difference so I use I use this lens for aviation photography and sports etc so yeah this is not my uh, most used lens but I do use it so yeah and uh, no for example because if you're a photographer that you it's not you use it for you shoot wedding for the not wedding but you are not amateur you are a better class than amateur I don't suggest this lens because I think you could go for a better op option you can it's better if you spend a little more and g have a better choice this the thing is that this lens what really sucks about this lens is the focus I can't show it to you right now because I don't have one SLR at the moment but the focus of this lens is bad and bad you know the sound that the Canon kit lens makes it's worse than that and it's very slow 
that's the problem that I found with this lens so yes it's very slow and not quiet at all but you know and also one thing about this lens is it has zoom creep as well so for example zooming in to 75 it, it does zoom creep a little bit so it's not a big deal but it can annoy sometimes hanging it from your strap and you know it, it getting in it for the zooming expanding but anyways so yes if you're just an amateur photographer and do photography as your as a hobby I do recommend this lens or the Canon 75 to 200 if you are more than um, uh, an amateur and you may use this for work I slightly don't recommend this lens for the reason that it's very slow and noisy and there are other options for example the Canon 55 to 250 ISSTM yes I know it has a shorter focal range but the fo fast focus and the silent focus is better so there are also other L lenses I know L lenses are optical they have better optical um, image and they do offer higher resol uh, image resolution etc so it's a matter of personal choice but as I said before you either are going to love it or you're gonna hate it so let's wrap up this review oh, the, my dust blower wrap up this review of the sense so yeah as I mentioned before this is a budget friendly lens it only costs about $150 which is not expensive compared to other options so as I said before the non APO version has slight less image quality but if you are very tight on budget I recommend the non APO but if you can spend a little bit more for, if not mistaken there's only about $40 difference which is very small I do recommend this lens or the Canon 75 to 200 so yeah it's you know a personal opinion but I don't actually hate this lens the only thing that I don't like about this lens is the focus it's just so bad and compared to the 75 to 200 this thing the 75 to 200 has not the, not the USM it has a better focusing it's faster and it's much quiet quieter than this lens so yes if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask comment below thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe